Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents Heavy Metal Pollution, How Can We Make Water Safe to Drink? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Nature Communications, published on August 7, 2020. Research conducted by Nyeok T. Bui, Huyung Muk Kang, Jeffrey J. Urban, and others from the School of Chemical, Biological, and Materials Engineering at the University of Oklahoma the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of California, Berkeley, and the Molecular Foundry at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, respectively. See the full list of authors in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. When you think of a glass of water, what words come to mind? Clean, safe, refreshing? Unfortunately, those words don't describe most of the drinking water in the world. According to the World Health Organization, one in three people on Earth don't have access to safe drinking water. Children in some parts of Africa, for example, may need to walk for miles to get access to a bottle of drinking water. No matter where you live, people need clean water. Think about it. We need water for drinking, cooking, bathing, hand washing, and growing food. We need water to survive. Copper is a contaminant that makes water unsafe to drink. We created a new material, Zeos, that can take copper out of the water and use it in other industries. We tested Zeos to see how much it reduced copper levels in water. We also tested how quickly it does that and if it would work in acidic environments. Our data support that Zeos is a good solution to cleaning up copper pollution. Introduction. Metals are a part of our everyday life. Your body needs metals such as sodium, potassium, and calcium to function and to keep you healthy. Yet some metals can be dangerous. We call these metals toxic heavy metals. Why? We call them heavy because they have high densities. We call them toxic because they are harmful to human health. Copper is one of the most widely used heavy metals. Copper is a metal that our bodies need in small amounts, but it becomes toxic at high levels. Many rivers and streams contain copper because many industries use this metal. Scientists consider a water body polluted with copper when the levels are too high. To protect human health and the environment, scientists need to remediate, clean up, the copper. Copper remediation is difficult. Current processes are expensive. They do not always do a good job of removing traces of copper without also removing other metals from the water at the same time. We wanted to create a method that can effectively remediate copper at a low cost. Our method uses a scientific process of adsorption. Adsorption occurs when ions or molecules of one substance stick to the surface of another substance. Here in figure one, you can see a material adsorbing contaminant ions. Remediation by adsorption happens when contaminant ions stick to the surface of the adsorbent material. The adsorbent is colored in blue, while the contaminant ions are gray in this representation. Methods. We created Zeos, a new supramolecular structure that adsorbs copper ions. In a supramolecular structure, molecules bond together rather than atoms. To make Zeos, we mix together three different molecules in water at 50 degrees Celsius and they reacted to form small crystals. We used x-rays to see how the different molecules arranged themselves and saw that hydrogen bonds held the molecules together in a crystalline structure. Here in figure two, you can see the structure of Zeos. Lavender represents zinc, red, oxygen, blue, nitrogen, gray, carbon, and white, hydrogen. Once we created Zeos, we tested how well it adsorbed copper ions. We also tested a different copper adsorbent known as ZIF-8. We already know that ZIF-8 is an excellent copper adsorbent, so we used it as a comparison for how well Zeos adsorbed copper ions. To test the adsorption of copper, we put both Zeos and ZIF-8 into a solution of copper chloride and water. We waited about 30 minutes and then checked the copper ion levels. We checked them again after 75 minutes. We wanted to see if these adsorbents could adsorb copper when other ions were present. We tested Zeos and ZIF-8 in water samples that contain copper, manganese, nickel, sodium, calcium, and iron. Then we measured the levels of each ion. 
Finally, we tested Zeos and Zip8 in water samples with a low pH to see if the environment would change their ability to absorb copper. pH is a scale used to measure if a solution is an acid, base, or neutral. Pure water is neutral with a pH of 7. We tested Zeos and Zip8 in water samples with a pH of 2.45, which means that they were very acidic. Results. We placed both Zeos and Zip8 in a solution with initial copper ion levels of 425 parts per million ppm. After 30 minutes, Zeos had reduced the copper levels to less than 1.5 ppm, while Zip8 had dropped the levels to about 42 ppm. After 75 minutes, the copper concentration in the solution with Zeos was still less than 1.5 ppm but the levels for ZIF-8 had increased to 115 ppm. When we tested these adsorbents in water with lots of ions, Zeos adsorbed 98% of the copper ions, but ZIF-8 only adsorbed about 53%. Zeos and ZIF-8 also lowered the iron and nickel levels. Zeos removed more iron and nickel than ZIF-8. When the pH was low, Zeos lowered the copper levels, but it did not lower the iron and nickel levels. ZIF-8 had the opposite effect. At low pH, ZIF-8 adsorbed high levels of iron, but not copper. How does Zeos compare to ZIF-8 in removing metal ions from contaminated water? In figure 3a, you can see the adsorbent action in water contaminated with multiple ions. And in figure 3b, you can see the results of the same test using very acidic water samples. For both graphs, the y-axis represents the percent of ions removed from the solution, and the x-axis represents three of the ions in the solution. Purple bars represent Zeos, whereas orange bars represent ZIF-8. In figure 3a, you can see that Zeos adsorbs more of the three ions represented than ZIF-8, and in figure 3b, you can see that at a low pH, Zeos adsorbs more copper than ZIF-8 whereas ZIF-8 adsorbs more iron than Zeos. Discussion. Our results show three important findings about our new material, Zeos. One, Zeos can reduce the amount of copper in the water up to 50 times faster than other adsorbents, such as ZIF-8. Two, Zeos can also remove iron and nickel from water, when it removes these ions, it still removes copper as effectively as it did when only copper was present. 3. Zeos works to only remove copper in acidic environments, because the copper levels went down to similar levels at low pH, whereas the levels of other metals remained the same. Our next step is to investigate if Zeos is reusable. We already know that when Zeos is in water, it expands. During this expansion, the water molecules temporarily become part of the structure of Zeos. When dried, Zeos contracts back to its original size. Now we want to see if we can desorb or remove copper from Zeos, and then reuse it to adsorb more copper. The desorbed copper can then be used in other industries. In this way, Zeos can act as a vehicle to carry copper from water to other environments. Conclusion Everyone should have access to clean drinking water. Our material Zeos can provide a new option for copper adsorption that is faster and more effective than many of our current options. It can help people get access to the water that they need to be healthy. You can also help make sure that people have access to clean drinking water. You can support a nonprofit organization such as Thirst Project or Charity Water. Thirst Project uses donations to dig wells and provide water filters to communities all over the world. Charity Water funds water projects internationally. Your support brings clean water to those who need it. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.